This viscast is going to deal with a problem that has a block being pulled up a ramp and how we can apply Newton's second law to analyse it. Pause the video now to read the question carefully. Now that you've read through the question, it's important to understand exactly what is being asked. The last sentence here asks how far the block moves in the first three seconds of its motion. There is quite a lot of other important information here that tells us various quantities and aspects of the problem that we might like to write down to help us build an understanding of how to begin the problem. For example, the mass is 14 kilograms and we know it's being pulled up the incline, we'll call that F with a subscript P for the pulling force with a 70 Newton force. We know the ramp is inclined at an angle of 25 degrees. We're also told the block is not moving initially, so its initial velocity is 0 meters per second. We want to know how far it's moved in the first three seconds, and so the information that we're really trying to calculate is this change in displacement here, which we don't know. Looking at this information, we can see that these last three points here, the things we know about its motion, its initial velocity, the time it's moving for, and the thing we're trying to find out, the change in displacement, they would all link together if we only knew the acceleration of the block. And especially if that acceleration, of course, was constant. How would we find the acceleration? Well, if we look up the top here, we have some information here about the force acting upon a mass. So perhaps we could use Newton's second law to link the forces to the masses and find the acceleration. And indeed, the evidence from the question is that the forces being applied will be constant, and therefore the acceleration should be constant, and therefore we should have enough information to calculate how far this block is moving. This is an important first step in this problem, reading the information writing down the things we know and trying to understand an approach to the problem. This is the interpret step of our solution. Now is a good time to try to understand in more detail what the problem looks like. So a diagram can help here. Here's our ramp. We're told it makes a 25 degree angle to the horizontal and it has a block sitting on the ramp being pulled up the ramp by a force that's parallel to the ramp. That's quite an important piece of information. We now know the vector properties of this applied force. It's a 14 kilogram block and we know it was initially stationary. There's a lot of information in this diagram and not all of it is necessary to apply Newton's second law. A much better approach is to isolate the object of interest, in this case the block, and just draw it as a dot. And then think about all of the forces that act upon that object. This is constructing a free body diagram. One of the obvious forces to consider here is the force that's pulling the block up the incline, the pulling force. Another force that you should be aware of is the block has a mass, therefore it will have a weight pulling straight downwards equal to mg. Looking at the diagram we can see the block is sitting on the surface of the ramp and therefore there will be a normal force at right angles to that surface. We can see the normal force and the pulling force will be at right angles because we're told the pulling force is parallel to the ramp and we know the normal force will be at right angles to the surface. Looking at the diagram to see if we've included all the forces that are acting on the object. There doesn't seem to be anything else interacting with the block, although one thing you might consider, if there was friction between the block and the ramp, we might have had to include a friction force in the opposite direction to the motion. However, the question is very clear that this is a frictionless situation, and so we don't need to include that. We seem to have now a complete free body diagram for our object, the block, and of course we're going to use this to apply Newton's second law. That is, the net force, which is a vector quantity, equal to the mass times the acceleration, also a vector. It's clear from our diagram these vectors are pointing in a range of different directions, this is clearly a two-dimensional problem, and we need to add up all of those forces. One way might be to add these arrows head to tail, graphically, 
and therefore calculate the net force but that relies upon me drawing very accurately and a better and more precise way is to think about the components of these vectors on a set of coordinates. One possible set of coordinates might be to consider the vertical direction as plus y and the horizontal direction as plus x. That's a perfectly correct approach. The only difficulty with this, as you can see, is that as the block moves up the incline, it's going to be moving in the y and the x directions. This force that's pulling it up the incline is pulling it up and to the left in our diagram here. So I would have an x component of acceleration and a y component of acceleration both to consider in this problem. This thing would be accelerating both to the left and upwards. A simpler approach is to consider a different set of coordinates for this problem. Consider a set of coordinates that consist of, for example, the y direction at right angles to the incline and the x direction that's parallel to the incline, as I've indicated there. The nice thing about this choice of coordinates is, as you can see, the motion of the block is now all in the x direction. That tells me immediately that I don't expect to have any acceleration in the y direction. This makes the problem much simpler to calculate. It's also quite nice in that two of my three forces are now exactly aligned with my coordinates. The normal force is all in the y direction, it has no x component, and the pulling force here is all in the x direction, it has no y component. Again, there's nothing incorrect with a different choice of coordinates. This choice just makes the problem a little easier to solve. The third force here, the weight force vertically downwards, of course now has an x and a y component. That is, part of it is into the incline and part of it is parallel to the incline. If you look carefully at the diagram, you'll realize that the 25 degree angle is actually the angle in this part of that triangle there. That might take a little practice to realize which angle is important, but as you'll see in a minute, we can actually double check that as we go along. I can now determine that the component of weight into the incline must be mg cosine 25 degrees, and the component of weight along the incline will be mg sine of 25 degrees. So if I was interested in the y component, which I'm not particularly interested to answer this question, I can see that the net force in the y direction would be the normal force in the positive y direction, and this component into the incline of the weight, which would be in the negative y direction, mg cosine 25 degrees. And because there's no acceleration perpendicular to the ramp, I know that that net force must equal zero, or the normal force in this case must equal mg cosine 25 degrees. Again, this is not particularly important for the problem, although it does show me that the normal force here is not equal to the weight of the block. The normal force here is something less than the weight of the block, because the block is sitting on an incline, not on a horizontal surface. I can double check that I've got this trig function correct here. What if this ramp was actually horizontal, that is the 25 degree angle there was actually zero degrees. Then of course if I had an object sitting on a horizontal surface with no vertical forces I'd expect the normal force would equal the weight. Well if this 25 degree angle was zero the cosine of zero is one and the normal force would be mg cosine zero or the normal force would equal the weight. And that gives me some reassurance that I do have my angles correct in this diagram. The normal force is mg cosine 25 degrees. But again it's actually the x direction here that I'm most interested in. If I now try to calculate the net force in the x direction, I have the force pulling the block up the incline, fp, that's in the positive x direction, and the only other component that I have in the x direction is the component of weight down the incline, so that will be minus, because it's heading in the negative x direction, mg sine 25 degrees. That's the net force in the x direction, so this must equal the mass times the acceleration of the block using Newton's second law. I can now rearrange this equation, dividing both sides by the mass, and I'll find the acceleration is the force divided by the mass minus g sine 25 degrees. And now I can put some numbers into that. It's a good time now to put the numbers in to find this acceleration. Um, the force is 70 newtons, 
the mass is 14 kilograms g is 9.8 meters per second squared multiplied by the sine of 25 degrees and if I do that calculation I come up with a number of 0 0.858 meters per second squared now I've actually kept an additional significant figure there you can see in my problem my values have all been given the, the least uh, precise values there have been given to two significant figures so I can really only give my final answer to two significant figures but this is an intermediate result so I'm quite happy to carry along some extra precision here to reduce my rounding error so now I know the acceleration what if I move my page up a bit here to give myself some more space to work I can now use my equations of motion for constant acceleration to say that my change in displacement here uh, must be equal to my initial velocity multiplied by time plus a half the acceleration multiplied by the square of the time. Now I can put all the numbers that I know here. My initial velocity was zero, uh, so I've got a half times the acceleration, which is 0 0.858 times the square of the time, which was three seconds, so there's my three squared, and I can put those numbers into my calculator, and I'll find an answer here of 3.86 meters but in fact what I should do is remember that I can only give this answer really to two significant figures so 3.86 to two significant figures will become 3.9 meters and that's how far the block moved up the incline in the first three seconds